In today's video, I'm going to go on a trip to Egypt to tell you a story about a pharaoh who was almost completely erased from history in an ancient, scandalous cover-up. This is a story about a young ancient Egyptian female who rose to power at a time and society that normally only accepted men as their rulers. How did she do it? Who were her enemies? And why was she almost completely erased from history? Ooh, a drama! What's up boys and girls, it's me Mr. Bradley and today we're learning about Queen Hapshit Soup <coughs> Queen Hot Chicken Soup <coughs> no, no. And today we're learning about Queen Hapshit Soup But before we begin, hit that subscribe button and get ready to do the starter questions on your screen right now Queen Hatshepsut was born in 1508 BCE she had two brothers and a sister who sadly died in her early life. So when her father, Pharaoh Thutmose, died, there were no sons to become king. So the Pharaoh died and the only child he had was Hapsetut. So Hapsetut became the leader, right? <coughs> Wrong. Unfortunately, Hapsetut was not a boy. Seriously? So the position went to Hapsetut's half-brother, Thutmose the second. Hmm, they're not very creative of names, are they? We'll call him Mini Thutmose, who was only half royal blood. Unlike Hapsetut, who was 100% royal blood. Thutmose was happy to be king, but worried that people might have been annoyed that he was only half royal blood. So he married Hapsetut, who was 100% royal blood, to strengthen his claim to the throne. And so just like that, at the young age of 12, Hapsetut had married the pharaoh and become queen. Hooray! I'm the king! But unfortunately, at the age of 31, Mini Thutmose died. Eh, uh, why? But don't worry, he has a son. His son will be Pharaoh. Eh, uh, but sir, his son's only three years old. Quiet! Oh glorious Pharaoh, what shall we do to rule over ancient Egypt? <laughs> hmm. We may have a problem here. Fearing that Egypt perhaps couldn't properly be ruled by a three-year-old baby, Hapsetut became Queen Regent. This kind of meant that Queen Hapsetut was completely in charge, or at least until the Pharaoh didn't have to use diapers anymore. So she was in charge, but she wasn't Pharaoh. She wasn't Pharaoh. Only a man can be Pharaoh. In Hapsetut's life, she had been the daughter of a Pharaoh, the sister of a Pharaoh, the wife of a Pharaoh, and the mother of a Pharaoh. For the love of Pharaoh, why could she not be a Pharaoh herself. Hapsetu thought enough is enough and so she declared herself Pharaoh. Nice. This was a big deal in ancient Egypt. <laughs> Although most people accepted that Hapsetu had 100% royal blood, it wasn't common for people to accept a Pharaoh as being a woman. After all, the society did believe that the Pharaoh was the human walking, talking, living god Horus, who, as I'm sure you have guessed it, was a man. If Hapsetu wanted to stay in power, she had to do something about this. Hapsetu was a pharaoh, but not for long, unless she could convince thousands of ancient Egyptian people that she was a living god. But how was she going to do this if they believed the living god was a man? Don't miss out on this part 2 video, where we learn how Hapsetu managed to pull this off, and we learn about her epic adventure to the legendary Forgotten Land of Punt. 